I have the same feeling as I have when I'm looking in the fire. Something links me to the future. Ryder Fintrud is a Norwegian and lives in a small fishing village just outside Oslo. He is not a mechanic, engineer, nor scientist. He is an artist. Did I start to create art? What is art? But as well as being an extraordinarily prolific and creative artist and sculptor, Ryder is also a visionary and a mathematician. When I first start to think about the puppet motion machine, I thought about the wheel. This wheel is something else. The weight is on the top of the wheel. And from this position, you can start working. I think you have to do something else. You have to do something. And so I start with the pendulums. I look at the wheel and put strings on all over it. So it comes up. When I had a lot of hanging parts, it's come up. Amazing. It was the yin and yang system. And then it started to be so amazing. So I couldn't go to sleep. I had to stay awake and, and make this machine. What was the beginning? What was the meaning with the yin and yang? This is the mathematical symbol for the force, the free force. Ryder Fintrud works 18 hours a day, seven days a week, and his obsessive nature shows clearly in this self-portrait. Ryder genuinely believes that, scaled up, his perpetual motion machine could well form the foundation upon which a new egalitarian society could be built, with everyone receiving free energy. And in fear that there may be those who would wish to suppress such a possibility, he keeps his machine locked away in a vault in the basement of his gallery. But is it perpetual motion? The beauty of Ryder's machine is the harmonious relationship between the ball, the magnets, and the pendulums. The ball is attracted to the horseshoe magnets, but the swing of the pendulums ensures these are lowered just in time to allow the ball to pass. Then this small round magnet is momentarily attracted to the ball which sets off a series of fulcrums and springs attached to the much heavier pendulum hidden within the main brass stem of the machine. This central pendulum is surrounded by powerful magnets that force it to bend this spring and so oscillate the track in such a way as to ensure it is at all times slightly lower just in front of the ball. These springs in the center of the track are there to give the three smaller pendulums an extra boost each time the ball passes over them, thus ensuring they do not lose any of their momentum. In order to generate electricity, the ball would have to have enough momentum to, say, hit the arm of a paddle wheel each time it passes. And once you have an axle that turns, you have the ability to generate electricity. But the importance of Ryder's machine cannot be overstated. Over the three days it was filmed, the ball maintained a constant speed measured to 1 25th of a second. There would therefore appear to be no reason why this machine should not continue to run forever. Perpetual motion. Something that for 300 years conventional science has said is impossible. A proposition we put to a senior university lecturer in physics. When I looked at this device, I was amazed by the ingenuity which had gone into this. If the ball is heavy, it's not going to get lifted off the track. And at the same time, if the rib magnet on the top, if that has a pivotal connection to the rest of the system so that it can easily move up and down, it will move down towards the ball. Normally, the efficiency of any device is about 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. This device may have an efficiency of the order of 80 and 90 percent. And I have even read some literature which says it has 99 percent efficiency. 
When you consider that the internal combustion engine is only 30% efficient, 99% is an extraordinary score. But only at 100% can this machine qualify as perpetual motion. At 101% it can be said to produce surplus and therefore free energy. Where is the power coming from? I had scientists from all over the world looking at it and they can't tell me where the power is coming from.